Do you struggle to understand your husband and why he does what he does? I definitely did, and I still do. And after 32 years of marriage and thousands of hours of coaching husbands, I want to share with you what I'm observing in case it might help you in your discovery. Julia Woods, and I'm a coach, and I'm a trainer and a founder of Beautiful Outcome, which is a co coaching company focused on helping couples communicate so they can really see and understand each other and create a life and marriage worth having together. So I am no expert in men and don't claim to be. I just know that I have spent years in frustrations trying to understand my husband. And what I've discovered after 32 years married to my husband is that there's a lot of things I just didn't understand. A lot of things I made up and a lot of things that I assumed based on how I see the world was how he sees the world. And I'm realizing that those things that I believed and thought have been a big contributor to what has been blocking me from really understanding. So the first thing I've observed is that men are pretty simple, not in a, not in a minimizing way at all. Please don't hear that or, or think that. I think women are kind of complicated <laughs> and maybe I'll speak about myself. I find myself more complicated than my husband. I find him to be pretty simple in the fact that I really believe in the bottom of his heart, he just wants to please me. And he wants to please the people that he loves. And he wants to be pleased with himself. And that seems to be an overarching theme. And throughout this, I'd love to hear, especially in the comments below, if what I'm saying resonates with you. I don't think that we're right or wrong in what we feel or think. It's just simply observations that my hope is we can open up more possibilities in communication and understanding. I believe that if we really can see and understand each other, it's just a whole lot easier to connect with each other. So I heard a psychologist one time say that men's deepest fear is that they are not enough. And women's deepest fear is, am I lovely? Am I lovely in the world? Do you see me? Do you notice me? Am I lovely? And I have seen that to, to show up as true in my husband and I's interactions and at the heart of what he's longing to know and to feel confident about is that he is enough, which is, that's, there's a whole lot I could share with you on these beliefs or these fears and how they drive us as humans. But in his healthiest version, he's showing up wanting to be enough, wanting to make a difference in my life and in the life of our kids. And that's really helpful to just understand that underneath much of his interactions and his reactions is just wanting to satisfy, wanting to satisfy me, wanting to satisfy his kids. I'm discovering that men really do want to feel like a hero to their woman. And they want to feel like they have the ability to turn our sadness into joy, to turn our stress into ease, to turn our busyness to rest, to turn our worries to peace. That is at the heart of so much of what I find my husband wanting to do in my life. Does that resonate when you take a bird's eye view and you see the heart of what is behind or the motive behind what your husband is doing? Do those things resonate for you? I'm discovering that this joke that we say about, you know, men trying to fix everything, I'm sensing that the heart underneath it is they feel useful when they solve problems. And you know, they, they want to know, um, they want to offer love and support. And they, they think the best way to do that is to be our hero, to rescue us from our problems. And again, I'm speaking in generalities and I know that isn't always helpful. So I'm not saying this is absolute truth or this is how it is. I'm inviting uh, my own self 
and you into the journey with me of exploring the possibilities of where their deeper believing, where their deeper nature, what's at the heart of it, and what might be underlying when they're stressed or frustrated in a conversation, or when they're trying to fix something. When I, I can understand that my husband is trying to fix something that I came to him to share my heart with him about, and I see him trying to fix it. What I used to tell myself is he just didn't care. He didn't really want to see me or know me. But when I can really get the sense that it's his best way in that moment, based on how he's trying to um, show up for me, it's the best way he knows how to offer love and support. And if I can get that, then I can invite him into understanding what I need that would feel most loving and supporting in that moment. That has been really eye-opening and changing for me. I've also come to understand that men tend to prefer clear communication, just simple, short, to the point. And again, I know this is not always the case because I have met some men who can be quite detailed, long talkers. So overall, I'm sensing that there is a larger percentage of men who like short, simple, to the point communication. That is my husband indeed. And I am more of a detailed, long talker. You've probably picked that up if you've watched many of these episodes. And what began to help me is to realize that my husband didn't need to be able to communicate the way I communicate. But if I could understand that his preference is short, simple, and to the point conversations, then I could have more of my elongated, deeper thought, every little detail conversations with myself. And you know, I could journal that out. When I journal, to me, I'm talking to God. And God loves those kind of conversations with me. He has the, he has the ability to, to be with it. Um, and so when I can journal that out and get that out or share it all with a girlfriend in a way that they track all my wanderings, then I can be at a better place to create the cliff notes. And when I can share the cliff notes with my husband, he is so much more connected and invested and cares about what I'm saying and he can connect with it. It was a huge epiphany for me to understand that men and women process information differently. Sure, I've heard and read men are from Mars, women are from Venus. But it was just different for me to sit in conversations with my husband and consider, maybe he's just processing this information different than I am. And when I could ask him, you know, what is it that you hear me saying? Or what do you think I'm trying to communicate to me? It opened up so much new awareness, so much new understanding of, oh, wow, okay. When I say, you know, the refrigerator is making a loud noise. I'm communicating that I'm just kind of irritated by the, the noise. But for my husband, it's like, you're telling me there's another thing that's going wrong. There's another thing that needs to be fixed. We just got that. Did we buy the wrong product? And I'm like, wow, my mind didn't go there at all. And so when we miss each other or are struggling to really um, connect in a conversation, often if I can just think, he's different than me, he's processing the information different than me, what is he actually processing? When I can remember that intuitive, get to the point that it's kind of intuitive, like he's very different than me, what is he actually processing? It opens up so much deeper understanding. There actually is some facts that I actually researched um, or some things that a research company found as they studied and researched men and women. And one of the things that, that speaks to this is they said, men take longer to process, process information. Women process five times faster. No wonder I have so many more words to say than he does because I'm processing the information faster. Boom. Okay, wow. Let me slow things down. 
let me get things to the simplified version because can I grace and appreciate that he's processing, taking it longer to process? No problem. There's a purpose for that. There's a gift to that. He sees things I don't because he's processing at a pace that allows him to pick up things that I don't when I'm on hyperspeed. Uh, another thing that the research revealed is that men are more analytical and logical. Women are more intuitive and integrative. So I tend to communicate from the intuitive and he's looking for the logical. And if I can just open my head and my mind to that, we can marry the two because they're really powerful together. But if I'm trying to get him to process from an intuitive place with me, and I'm missing the logical that helps ground him, we're going to really miss each other and have a hard time communicating. Men have more difficulty relating to their own feelings and can feel threatened by the expression of them. This was another piece that I found interesting in the research. And that when they experience, because they feel this difficulty in relating to their own motion, emotions and can feel threatened by them being expressed, and I'm kind of emotional, <laughs> I understand more about why those extreme expressions of emotions bring him to shut down. What I told myself for years was he was shutting down because he didn't care. How am I crying so deeply and you're shut down? The only way I knew how to process that was to add the meaning that he just didn't care or didn't want to be there for me. But when I can recognize that emotions as a male in, in general, as a male, and in my husband specifically, I can see that his shutting down is his own external expression of an internal inability or difficulty in processing my emotions. And so when I can come to him and express the logical aspects of what I'm feeling and who, how I want him and need him to be in that with me. I don't need him to solve anything. I don't need him to fix anything. I just want him to be with me, to be a, a human being on the other side of me expressing some messy emotions so that I can hear myself externally process. And then at the end of doing that, I will have clarity. I will have new levels of awareness because thought emotions are thoughts trapped in the body looking for language. And if he can just give me the space to find the language behind these things that feel really messy, but not messy like they're going to take me out or messy like I can't handle them. They're just messy and I need someone to be there that I know loves me, that I can look into your eyes and I can express this and I can gain understanding of myself. And as you hear things that might seem odd or limiting or not true, would you just be willing to maybe help me see that that seems like it might be important to get curious about or question a little more than I have? That's what I need. That's what I want. And when he can understand that, we have very powerful interactions. My emotional needs are met and he feels connected because he's not, he knows that I'm by being there with me in it, he's satisfying me and that he is everything I need in that moment. One simple thing that we heard from a speaker, I don't remember who it was, but just the simple aspect of starting conversations off. Is this a fix or is this a feel conversation? And when I can ask my husband, are you in a place to be in a feeling conversation with me and respect his honest expression of where he's at? It's opened up a lot of deeper conversations and I'm being moved to emotions in this conversation with you just because um, tomorrow when this airs, the next day will be my husband's birthday. And I just wanted to, <laughs> I just wanted to offer um, maybe appreciation for who he is. And the more I can understand him, the more I appreciate him and I see the gift that he is. So 
my hope is that this is helpful for you as you are on the journey of trying to understand your man and really coming to appreciate the gift that they are to you. Thank you for joining me. And I'm, <laughs> I'm passionate about connection and helping couples connect. And I would really love to stop crying right now. <laughs> um, however, what I've got for you in the um, description below is a link to an, a special thing, a fun thing that I created. I love coming up with conversation starters and fun things that couples can do together. And so I've put together a free resource for you called A Hundred Deeper Connection, uh, a conversation, uh, a hundred deeper connection prompts and ideas uh, just to help you out on your journey of starting to connect and develop deeper conversations. Men, I do believe, want emotional intimacy, just like women do want physical intimacy. But sometimes in our misunderstanding of who each other is, we don't know how to find that place where we can both meet and appreciate and enjoy that about each other. And so what I've hoped to share with you in this message is just some of what I've discovered that is allowing my husband and I to come together in emotional and physical intimacy by getting off of or interrupting some of what I thought was true or my comparison of my husband to myself. So thank you for joining me. If this has meant something to you, if you've connected with any part of this, I'd love for you to share that in the comments below. I look forward to seeing you in our next episode. Hey, hon. Yeah. What do you think is the biggest thing in 32 years of marriage that I have misunderstood about you? Yeah, I've judged you for that a lot. You're an only child and I came from one of seven, so I had a lot of misunderstandings about what it meant to actually own your needs and want things. And so you've helped me come into a healthier view of that. So 